Genshin Impact is a brand new free-to-play cross-platform anime gacha RPG that released on September 28th, 2020, already seeing massive worldwide success. In this game, you can explore a massive open world, collect different characters, defeat bosses, solve puzzles, play through a fully voice-acted story, and fight enemies using different elemental abilities, each of which interact with each other in different ways. But before we get into it, a quick word from today's sponsor. Nowadays, with ever-increasing tech censorship, privacy issues, and your every detail being stored online somewhere, it's never been more important to protect your data than now. And what better way to do that than with the most highly rated VPN out there, ExpressVPN. For those of you that don't know what a VPN is, it's basically a piece of software that creates a secure tunnel between your device and the internet, and masks your IP address so it looks like you're browsing from a different location, so your data can't be intercepted by hackers, third parties or your ISP. ExpressVPN is super easy to use, just open the application, select the country you want your IP address changed to, click connect and you're all set. Unlike other VPN providers, ExpressVPN only invests in the most premium servers and you'll be able to see from running speed tests that the impact on your internet speed is negligible. On top of that there's also 24-7 customer support with live chat and ExpressVPN doesn't store logs from any of its customers. Aside from just protecting myself when browsing the internet, I personally use ExpressVPN to gain access to websites that are blocked outside of my country, such as Funimation for Anime, Southpark.cc, BBC iPlayer, and different Netflix libraries from other countries. Additionally, due to my location in Thailand, it's sometimes necessary for me to use ExpressVPN to play certain games that are region locked. So if you're interested in making the smart move to join ExpressVPN and have peace of mind when it comes to your data browsing the web, then go to expressvpn slash the lazy peon or click the link in the description below to find out how you can get three months of ExpressVPN for free. Straight away, as soon as you open the game, beautiful soundtrack playing, really nice relaxing intro screen, intro cutscene has voice acting, really nice art style, I like it a lot. Let your name be known as Peon. Give my sister back! So this is my little companion, is it? This little fairy thing. This thing next to my character is the stamina bar. It goes down when I use the dash. There's something I could collect here. Blue horned lizard. So there's gathering in this game as well. Run through the bushes. The bushes actually move. The grass moves as you walk through that as well. Nice attention to detail. Climb. You can climb? Oh, you just walk up to a wall and climb. Okay, that's pretty cool. Okay, that's a cool picture. There's a little dog here, can I kill it? Oh, I can, raw meat. Swimming feels pretty decent. Oh, wait, I'm drowning. Oh, okay. Oh, a little blob thing's popped out. Oh, it wanted me to do my elemental skill. Okay. I've also got a Q skill, elemental burst. Nice. Giant sky monster. It's a really cool start to the game. Big damage. Cut him up. Common chest. Got some loot. Lots of cutscenes early on. I wonder if it's going to continue to be this story driven. Obtained Amber. Okay. Wait, so I can press 2 and now I can play as Amber. That's cool. She can move whilst firing arrows as well. Switch weapons. And I can enhance it as well. So we've taken the sword straight to level 5. I can understand why people were calling this the Asian Breath of the Wild now. She has an E ability. Throw a grenade. Wait, what? We threw some kind of cute little chibi explosive. <laughs> Got ourselves an exquisite chest. Equip this, I guess. She's going to teach me about cooking. So it's a good thing I've been gathering all of this stuff because a lot of it is used in cooking. Oh, stop. Got myself some food, now we're heading into the main city. So this is the town, is it? Typical anime town. I like that you can just climb everything in this game, it's really cool. Am I gonna fall and die? No. Probably would have been easier just to take the stairs, but you know. More games need to have climbing. It definitely adds an additional feeling of freedom to the game. So apparently I can glide now. Yes. Well, shit's starting to hit the fan. <laughs> Oh wait, what? I'm actually going to be fighting this thing now? Oh, what? I'm bloody zapping it! So now I'm following the dragon and I'm just shooting fucking light beams at it. And I'm, I'm so high, I'm almost in space. 
Okay, game. And that's that. We've saved the day. Three million pre-registration milestone reward. Oh, I can use these books to level up. Is this thing just boosting the crap out of me? So now I've got a level 12 character and a level 13 character. 30 minutes into the game. I think that's just because of the login rewards. Another cutscene, another waifu, and possibly another Cute. character. I can already tell that at end game, this is just gonna be another waifu simulator, isn't it? And once Collect it over, all the waifus. It's a business model that's been successful in Asia for a very long time now. So I've got a bunch of choices for things I can wish for. Another book. So I got the equipment pack, essentially. Oh wait, we got a character as well? Amber. I already have her though. Why is it giving me a character that I already have and that the game gives me by default? That's kind of annoying. Test run. Game's giving me some kind of character trial thing. What's my Q ability do? So I can ultimate? Ooh, big damage. That's what it does. Switch to this character, use my Q. Ooh. She's strong. Something I like a lot already is how the damage numbers pop up on the screen in this game. It's really smooth and the animation of it is quite satisfying to look at. Kill this boss. And there it is, challenge completed. Looks like we're gonna head into a dungeon soon. So before you go into dungeons, you get to select your party members. I only have two. Can I jump off it? Oh, I can. So I need to use fire on these things to burn away the thorns. Big damage. Ah, there's a pillar here. It's got a flame icon, so I guess I need to shoot it. Precious chest. And that's my first domain finished. I made the ice melt with my fire arrows. That's so cool. The only other game I've seen with elemental interactions like this is Spellbreak. But that's a completely different genre of game to this, so I like this character. The bow and arrow feels really impactful. I like all of these little treasure chests out in the world. Use my windmill and that's made a fire tornado because the wind took the fire monsters. That's a nice photo. I'm actually having a lot of fun just taking screenshots in this game at the moment. Temple of the Wolf. If there's water around, opponents may become wet. Let's this and it freezes them and it actually changes the terrain that's so cool disable the flamethrower with the ice now i'm fighting ice monsters so now i should switch to fire girl vaporize i like all of this character switching there's spikes underneath the water so what i need to do is press my e and make an ice path over it Oh, okay. I've actually fully obtained this guy as a character. Nice. Man, look at that sunset. The whole sky's turned orange. I like the day-night cycle in this game. The different lighting really makes the world feel alive. Oh, what was that? Well, that's cool. So sometimes you're randomly gathering plants and then creatures can spawn. The chest here is something going to spawn. If I was to guess, maybe I need to light this torch like this torch as well. So far, I'm definitely enjoying the feeling of exploration playing this game. There's a lot of little things you just find out and about in the open world. So if I shoot this torch, is that gonna unlock the chest? It does, like that. That was just a random puzzle out in the world. Not even a quest objective, it's just there. Now the combat's actually starting to grow on me. At first I thought it was really simple. It kind of is but it flows together really well. Like there's no animation lock, for example, when switching characters. Everything is really fluid. At some point, I'm expecting the looting of all these chests to get a bit repetitive, but so far it's not feeling that way. Load 161 out of 30,000. Okay, so inventory, space and weight, not an issue in this game. You can loot a lot. Hey, cutie. Nice, we get to play as Lisa now. I so I guess she's a witch character, my favorite oh. archetype, oh, and she uses them? lightning. Destroy all these in 20 oh, seconds. Oh, okay, big AoE. Oh, they actually tried to get out of the AoE. Really? That was smart. Big AoE. Oh, nice. Oh, they're standing in water, so they took extra damage because lightning obviously hurts more if you're in water. Now that I've kind of left the tutorial phase, I'm starting to enjoy this game a lot. Okay, I've got my Q ability, now what? Big damage. 
Okay. I kind of like this character. She reminds me a lot of a Black Desert Witch. So now I've got a bit of platforming, have I? Oh, yeah. God. I knew I should have stayed home. So now she's dead. I need to play as another character. I guess you only fail when everyone's dead. And the skies have been cleared. I guess we went through all the domains and now everything's back to normal. Prologue Act 1 completed. So now the game's given me the freedom to go out adventure and explore, make my way to adventure rank 10 any way I see fit, and then I can continue with the main story. I love stuff like this, going on top of a mountain, being able to look off into the distance and just knowing that everything I see is a place I can physically travel to. Beautiful. So now I've also unlocked Lisa as a permanent character. Got a full team of four. What's this? Is this thing actually leading me to something? It is. A hidden chest. Oh my god, all of these little hidden puzzles you just find as you're exploring the world. They're so cool. The world What's genuinely does feel alive in this game. Oh, that's cool. These icicles just surround me and cut up these fire boys. Dodge the explosion. And then fire's left on the floor after the mobs have exploded as it should. Everywhere I look, I'm coming across puzzles and things. It's really enjoyable. I open a chest. Walk a few meters and it looks like I found another puzzle. Gather up the sprites and then jump here and then jump over the barrier and then I can get in the chest. It just seems as though the world in this game is packed with things to do. Another teleport shrine. Go to the statue that's unlocked more of the map. Worship statue. Okay. Max stamina increased. What is this? I don't think I have the DPS to kill this bloody thing. I need to melt through his barrier. Alright, I'm gonna need to upgrade some gear. Four, three, no! Come on! Oh! Big damage. There it is. Wait, there's another one? Okay, well, that's impossible, isn't it? Yeah, I just don't have the damage for that. <laughs> this area looks cozy. So I need to defeat a monster to unlock this statue, apparently. Oh, God. He's coming in hot. That hurts. Switch to this guy. Pop my Q. Kill the monster. There it is. Unlocked the ability to claim this statue. That's more of the map unlocked. Big AoEs. Superconduct that. Oh, some nice damage. Kill the boss. Another chest. Something I wasn't really paying attention to. If you press J, this opens up the quest log. And there's a bunch of quests that I need to be cracking on with. So at the blacksmith, I can craft epic weapons. Four star rarity as well. All I need to do is gather the materials. So now I've got a quest to go find treasure. The game's given me a little treasure map and a riddle, which tells me where it is. There's been a good amount of variety to the questing so far. So I've gone to the Adventurer's Guild and apparently every adventure rank you go up, you can receive rewards. F1 to open the handbook. Oh my God, there's more things I can claim here as well. And these things in the Adventurer's Handbook give a lot of XP. Wow, okay, now we're making progress. Seeing all of these missions, the sheer variety of everything, and how everything is contributing to that sense of progression, it's a really good feeling. It's actually making me really excited to play more. Is this where the treasure chest is for the quest? I was only climbing up here to get a better view of the city. Wait, there's another map. Now we're doing X marks the spot. The quest design so far has been fantastic. I actually feel like a real adventurer. I know this is just a single player game, but MMOR, RPGs need to take note of some of this world building and the variety of stuff to do in this game. The adventurer guide gives me a list of bosses I can fight as well. Exquisite chest. Was this part of the quest? Okay, I think this was. There's another treasure map. I need to go inside a secret cave. Another one of these solo dungeon things. I'm making short work of these mobs. My characters are pretty powerful. Melter! Now we got a boss fight. Ouch. Let's mix the ice with the lightning and it's dead oh and there is a reward for me precious chest when climbing you use less stamina if you don't jump climb come on <laughs> fuck tired i love the music of this game is so relaxing it's like anime piano style music it's my favorite type of gaming music to be honest so this thing here is supposed to be a boss. Straight away I can see explosive barrels. Oh, I need to fully charge this for the spell to go off. Okay, it's dead. Challenge complete. 20 original Ryzen required to claim a reward. Do I even have that? 
Level 20. So apparently this is max level for my character. So now this weapon's level 20. For further progression, I need to gather materials for weapon ascension. I need to ascend my characters as well as their weapons to go past level 20. Open the chest in 30 seconds. Where? Ooh. Oh, wait, what? Okay, here we go. Oh god, that was a disaster. Okay. Boost, boost. Boost. There it is. We got it. It still hasn't got repetitive, and I'm a few hours in at this point. Adventure rank 10. Oh, fuck off. Draining. For an anime game, the weather effects also look fantastic. I like how when it rains, you can then use lightning abilities and they do more damage because things are obviously covered in water. It just makes sense. Come on, give me something good. Oh, nice, we got a new character. Noel. Another new character? Bennett. I can spend these gems on getting more wishes. So everything I got for those wishes seems absolutely useless. Based on the amount of duplicates and useless shit I've got from these RNG wishes, I can already say that I definitely wouldn't spend any money on this game. I can imagine it being extremely frustrating to try and get the things that you want. It's just the vibe I'm getting already. This room's a lot more detailed than I expected. Wait, is there stuff I can read? Oh, I can collect books. Okay, there's a massive library here. Full of books. Lots of different lore. I'm actually blown away by the amount of attention to detail and extra little things that have gone into this game. I didn't even expect you'd be able to just open these doors like that. I thought it was gonna be an invisible barrier. Okay, so now I've got Witcher vision and I can track people down. Oh wow, this character uses a great sword or a great club. Totally going for the great sword. And she seems like a bit of a tank as she's got some kind of earth shield here. She's a little bit underwhelming so far. Perhaps her ultimate's better. Makes the reach of her weapon a lot longer. Okay, that's a cool ultimate. So right now I'm kind of curious what this game looks like on mobile as I know it's cross-platform. I'm finding it hard to believe that such a massive open world 3D game actually functions well on mobile, but I guess we're gonna find out. Next I tried out Genshin Impact on mobile, but the recording kinda messed up. Overall though, I was pleasantly surprised how well the game ran, how good it looked, and how easily it controlled. I think this is probably the first third person game on mobile that I'd actually play. So after trying Genshin Impact for a bit, my first impressions of the game so far are as follows. It's a free to play game where you can actually experience and enjoy the the vast majority of the content without spending a thing. The world building is amazing in this game. Everywhere you look, there's something going on. Puzzles, chests, hidden quests, bosses, things to gather. It's such a great world to explore. The soundtrack of the game is a solid 10 out of 10. The sense of progression you get early on in the game is really exciting and makes you want to play more. Going through the adventurer's handbook, uncovering the map, unlocking the teleports, playing through the quests and leveling up your character slash gear. All of this feels great early on. Visually, I love the cell shaded anime art style. The climbing and gliding aspects of the game give you a real sense of freedom when exploring the world. The animations are really good. The user interface is clean and easy to navigate. This game is easily the best and largest open world 3D RPG that you can play on your mobile phone. It actually controls surprisingly well on mobile too. If you're a fan of storytelling, the game seems to do a great job of this as well, with plenty of well-made cutscenes and the majority of quests being fully voice acted. Once you hit Adventure Rank 30, you're pretty much time-gated by the resin energy system. All of the endgame activities and late-game progression require that you spend resin, such as dungeons, bosses, and events. There's a limited amount of resin you're capped at, with it taking 16 hours for a full recharge. Basically, if you want to play the game for a decent period of time at endgame, you'll need to pay for more resin to do activities. 
Obviously, as a gacha game, it's going to cost you a lot of money to unlock every character and get the best gear in the game. I've already heard stories of people spending in the region of $5,000 to $20,000 on this game already. This alone should tell you that there's some real predatory shit waiting for you at Endgame. A common complaint I've heard is some people saying that the game should have released with more content. As this is a first impressions though, I can't really speak on this. Overall, Genshin Impact seems like a genuinely good free-to-play RPG, and you can experience the entire story of the game and get to Adventure Rank 30 without spending a penny. The main issues with the game and complaints people have with it seem to start at endgame when you're pushing for further progression with the resin system, lockouts, and time gating. My advice would be to play the game, get to Adventure Rank 30, finish the story, then just quit whilst you're ahead once you've had your 30 hours of free fun. Past that, just know you're playing a Chinese gacha game designed to extract money out of you at some point. But that's it for this video guys, as always let me know your thoughts on Genshin Impact in the comments below. Based on the messages I've had, it seems like a lot of you are probably playing it, so I'd be interested to hear your thoughts. Shout out to ExpressVPN for another sponsorship this month, and feel free to follow me on social media, links for that on screen. Thanks for watching, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll see you again really soon.